chance to upset James Harden and Russell Westbrook. This, of course, after the Rockets traded CP3 for Westbrook last summer. So, Skip, in your opinion, who's easier to root for, Chris Paul or Harden and Westbrook? This is a very difficult question for me because it boils down to, quote, unquote, the lesser of evils. <laughs> All three players obviously have some career flaws on their resume. Right. Obviously, James and Russ have had big playoff flameouts mm -hmm. see Russ in game six. And it's happened many times before, and it's happened to James right. too many times before. So I get that. But I find them more easy to root for right now because of what those two have done together this year. I believe that they love to love each other and it's legit. I think it's authentic that, that they have actually sacrificed for each other, mm -hmm. that they have actually shown some unselfishness to each other that they have never shown before in any way, shape or form in their previous incarnations with other teammates. So I appreciate the fact, like James will defer to Russ to a fault. And I don't think it's because he doesn't want the pressure or the expectation. I just think they have a real bond. Yeah. So I root for that because they're trying. They're, they're trying to find a niche where the two of us together can figure out how to actually win playoff games. Right. They didn't do it in game six. They better do it tonight or all hell is going to break <laughs> loose in Houston. Yeah. It's going to cost D'Antoni his job. It's it's going to cause huge. It, it, well, I you can't break the team up. Hey, because you trading you. Well, I mean, what you going to trade? I mean, Russ got a contract making almost fifty million a year. James Harden. Well, you're not trading James because he's he's your foundation piece. So what are you going to trade? What are you going to get rid of? You don't have any bigs. You traded Capella. You might get rid of that GM. He, he's he's yeah. high profile and and he's mad scientist and he keeps. Throwing a new group together, well, like a new chemistry stuff. experiment. He threw some stuff. He, he, stuck, he stepped in okay. earlier right. this year. I, that's another <laughs> point that we could talk about later. All right. This is just me on Chris Paul III, CP3. I have always found him a little difficult to root for because too many times, wherever he's been in previous incarnations, he has fallen into feuds and then fallen apart with a co-star. It was Blake Griffin with the Clippers, and it's shameful how, how those teams underachieved under Doc mm -hmm. because it was Chris and Blake, DeAndre. and it was DeAndre, and it was J.J. Redick, and it was Austin Rivers, obviously, and it was Jamal Crawford. Yeah, Big and Baby. Matt Barnes and Big Baby. That team should have gone places, and it didn't, and in the end, it degenerated into CP3 versus Blake. Then Chris goes to Houston, and what happened? he and James began to irritate each other until they fell completely apart. So I, I believe in the end, from what I've heard, it's, it's often a little more Chris's fault than the other co-star's mm -hmm. fault. He's just hard to handle. But if you give him a New Orleans Hornets team back in 05, 06, 07, in that period. Young team. Young team where they just follow his lead mm -hmm. against my Spurs in that 05 plus. He was extraordinary. They were afraid of him. They thought he was like a pit bull masquerading as an NBA point guard. Mm -hmm. And he was hard to handle on and off the court, but it didn't matter because he was the leader of the team. And I said the other day, this year for Chris Paul in Oklahoma City, it's the best year of his career. Yeah. But he was the unquestioned leader of a, young team. of a team that just sort of got thrown spare parts together. Right. They're all from someplace else. Right. And they're mainly waiting for the draft choices to kick in in right. the future. But look at them. They tied Houston the regular season at, in record. Right. Okay, that'll work. Yes. So in the end... If you give him a team that he is the unquestioned leader where he doesn't have to feud with another co-star, right. he's great. Right. He's been not good. He's been great as the leader of the players. He's been unbelievable. And I think the edge that he plays with has helped him in that position because that's a hard job. And you have to fight for the right. Right. You know, you, you have to go to the mat with owners for various things. And he has done that. Yeah, okay? I, I think the thing is for me, Skip, is that when I look at him in that role, it's kind of like the role because he has to fight for the underdog. He ain't fighting for LeBron. LeBron gonna get his money. He ain't fighting for Giannis and KD yeah. and James Harden. They're gonna get their money. But what about the guys that's never gonna be that? And I look at Chris Paul, Skip. You look at him, uh, uh, Chris Paul, and they say he's six foot, okay, 5'11 ish. 
So he's always constantly having to fight for his place yes. and get his recognition because the point guard is not unless you magic. How much love is the point guard? Uh, the, the, and because he's an old school point guard like Magic. How much love are you gonna get? Now, had he won a championship, mm -hmm. it's a different story. Skip, I find myself rooting for these guys all for different reasons. I root for James Harden because I, I'm thinking every time I watch him, I'm gonna see something special. I'm gonna see a 50 point triple double. I'm gonna see him drop 60. I'm gonna see him hit some threes that nobody else would even attempt to take, let alone take and make. I watch Russ. I expect to see all out hustle. Everything is a 400 meter run. And he's going all out, back, back and forth, back and forth for 40 minutes. And I'm gonna see a triple dub. And I might see something that no one thought was ever gonna happen since Wilt did it. A 20, 20, 20 ball game from a six three point guard. He got 20 points, 20 rebounds, 20 assists in a game, Skip. And when I watch CP3 play, I'm like, he's the ultimate leader. He's the type of guy who would have been great in the military because he can get guys to follow him. He can get guys to believe in him, Skip. He's and I think the thing is that all of them are trying to want their place because, Skip, we if a guy doesn't win a championship, we don't want to rightfully give them the credit they deserve. Because, well, my, well how good is he? He ain't win no championship. Like, that's easy. Mm. Like, Skip, if everybody were to win a championship, would the championship be as valuable if everybody can get it? No. So that's what makes it special because you have to go through things in order to get that. Yeah. And Chris Paul really has it. Has he really played with what we would think is, is another transcendent or a generational talent? No, he has not. So let's be real. Blake Griffin was, 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 could jump out the gym and all that. And he's, he, he's, he, uh, uh, he's expanded his ability to shoot the three. But we don't think it's Blake as a general. He ain't AD. He not KD. Mm. He's okay. not, he not Kawhi, he's not, he, so he hasn't played. He ain't D-Way. Won championships in this era. Has played with another great player that we would say at least is a generational talent if we not say transcendent. But I believe Kevin Durant is a transcendent player. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen anybody, I mean, we're gonna talk about him a little later. So for me, Skip, I root for all these guys for a different reason, unless you know they play and you know who. Mm -hmm. And then all of them can get the boot. Okay, back to your statement, Chris Paul is the ultimate leader obviously the leader of the Players Association. Mm -hmm. How can you be the ultimate leader if you have a career-long reputation for cheap shots and dirty <laughs> play? Seriously, I gotta ask, because people don't bring this up enough. Chris Paul has a long-time reputation and, and almost a legacy for weird below-the-belt shots that started back in 2005 in the ACC tournament, <laughs> Wake Forest versus NC State, Julius Hodge, if we could see this one, and Chris got suspended for the, the, the next game in the ACC tournament, and he just pops him right in the privates. There he is. Boom. I had an accident. I don't think Has so. it happened since? Whoops. Down he goes. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> okay, so that was the first instance. That's not that. a good look. That's not a good look. I give you that. It was not a good look. And then I was watching this game live. It's the closeout game at Memphis versus Clippers in 2013. The game is out of hand and over. It's 229 to go. And all of a sudden, Chris Paul just loses his mind and gets a running start and cheap shots Mark Gasol. And just, I think he aimed at the midsection, but he got him more up in the chest. I'm not sure. A lot of people thought it was aimed lower but Gasol sort of winced and flinched and ducked. And I was like, what, what are you doing? Sometimes he plays with <laughs> such rage that, that he just decides, wait, wait. I'm going to go cheap shot somebody. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you're a small guy, people take advantage I, of you. I got it. Because people think it. you're small, they can just run over you. And they're like, Mark Gasol probably did something to him earlier in the night. Maybe, we don't maybe. know. It's highly possible. Yeah. Even in this series... OKC versus Houston, <laughs> he's had a couple where it just looked like a blatant... He got pop. rust the other night, I, I, I think. I popped you in the privates, man. I got <laughs> you right in the privates. It's just, it, it's his, his go-to move when he gets frustrated. He just pops people in the privates. And I'm like, how could... You're Chris Paul. You're True. Hall of Fame bound. You can't do that. No, you couldn't and you shouldn't, Skip. But to your point, all of these guys, as great as they've been in the regular season, has had some shortcomings in the playoffs. We remember that game six with James Harden. He had like 12, 14 oh. turnovers. And he, had, and he still had the game on his hand, and he dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And we saw Russ come up smaller. We've seen CP3, it's been more because of injury, Skip. It's like, look, they, got, they got Golden State dead to right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then he hurts his hamstring. And that's happened a couple times. And he hurts, yep. he, oh, he hurts his groin. All right. So, Skip, it's because of the shortcomings. And, and you know, I, I, people look at Russ. Oh, man, he's selfish. He won't pass. Kevin Durant leaves him and goes and wins championships. And everybody's like, man, that was Russ's fault. Russ could have should have conceded and let KD do whatever he want. But, Skip, I mean, the man got there. I mean, he wasn't a high, a high recruit coming out. He got to where he got with that mindset, and it served him well. But some things that sometimes the thing that